Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of my Adele McClay interview series. Today we've got uh, a great treat for you in that I'm interviewing someone very, very special in my life, George. Now George is 101 years old today and today is the 12th of February 2015. George is a relative of mine by marriage. His wife and my grandmother were cousins. So I've known George for a very, very long time. And if you can see a picture of George, um, the one that you're, you're seeing is one that was taken about nine years ago. And I can promise you, he doesn't look any different. He doesn't look a day over 50. He's always looked that. He's looked very young. So George, it's just lovely that you've agreed to talk to me today. And I thank you for sharing your story with, with my listeners. How are you doing? All right, thank you. Have you had a good birthday so far? Uh, yes, a very good birthday, yes. Yes, very pleasant. So, 101 years old, that's a, a big age. What do you think the secrets are for a long life? Well, it doesn't seem to me like a great age. It's just something you want to live through. But there are lots of periods in between where life is quite different. For instance, during my early days, it was hard labor for all people because it got the heavy industries, the different industries in the country. So life has changed dramatically as far as the young people are concerned today. They don't have that hard work to do. And I think by hard work, it does help you to be very strong. You can only get stronger by being active and working hard, yes. Absolutely. So tell me, how important has health and fitness been to you in your life? Well, with that good health and fitness, one wouldn't have been able to carry on because I changed my occupations from one to another because I was in a healthy state. And that was important. And uh, I, I was always very active. I enjoyed walking. I was interested in boats, and I, I had a lot of interest that way, yes. And you've always looked after your uh, diet as well. You've always been a very slim uh, man. Well, yes, uh, I've, been, I've always I've enjoyed eating, and I was very partial to wine in my time by, well, while, while I lived in New Zealand, yes. Mm -hmm. but right. Everything in moderation, is it? Yes, yes, yes. What about loving relationships? You were married to it's Anne for a very long time, weren't you? I was very fortunate with my wife well, for 51 years. Uh, we married young, 20 and 17, wow. and uh, by 25, the time was 25 year old, we uh, left Scotland from the heavy industry to, to go to New Zealand, uh, and that was quite a, quite a complete change. Uh, we had a loving relationship over those period, I, I would say, but again, uh, my new life, I have a friend, a lady friend, who have done, who have travelled extensively in Europe mm. and to Australia. Well, after Anne passed away a few years later, you met Mary, didn't you? And yes. you've developed a wonderful long-term friendship with her. We have two flats. One uh, with just the the, the the lobbies that were in between the, the, the between our flats. And uh, I've been out there for lunch today, so. Uh, yes, we have a very good friendship, and it's, it's, it's so important. It is. So let's just look at friendships. Uh, you've travelled and lived around the world. Yes. You've met people from all walks of life. Yes. How important have has meeting people and, and relationships been to you? Very important. Uh, we, I, we, we were, my, both my dear wife and myself, we, we had two doctor friends and, the, and, the, and one with a wife. And that, 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 for many, many years, they have now depart, departed themselves by about 10 years ago. And they, they were friends over a period of probably 30 years. Uh, we had close friendships with them. Uh, yes, friendship is very important. And being in organizations too, my late wife, she was a, the, 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 the president of an organization whereby she met a lot of women folk. And uh, I who had been president of a debating society in, in Auckland, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a stamping ground for young lawyers. So that was an experience, and of course it meant you met, you met a lot of people and became very friendly with some too. 
Well, for as long as I've known you, you've talked about all the different friends you have around the world and, and the people you've met in your travels. I just heard from a story from a friend uh, of, uh, oh, oh dear, she was a, a girlfriend of my oldest son, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they went in different ways, but we have always kept in touch, and uh, today she's told me she's coming across here in, uh, in June, uh, they're going on a cruise, evidently. Yes, we keep up with, I keep up with people in Australia and New Zealand yet. Mm. They are the families of my old friends. Mm, it's fantastic. And as we've talked, you've, you've said that you've done lots of travel. What was so important for you about the need to travel? Why did you and Anne want to do that? I, I was me wanted to do it. I wanted to get away from hard, hard liver in the pits. I thought there must be something else in this. And the, the, the people who I knew, knew of that time, who worked in the pits, they didn't have a long life, they had a reasonable number of years, but it wasn't the, 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 the working in those sort of conditions. It wasn't the best for health, I thought, well, the, one of the reasons that was, I, I thought there must be opportunities elsewhere, and I found that was uh, what happened with New Zealand. I went into a heavy industry, I, went into, I, I was able to become... Uh, a carpenter, a joiner, uh, passed the examinations and, and changed my skills from one to another, yes. Mm. And what, what else did you learn about travelling in all the countries that you went to? Um, well, with tra tra travelling, well, we travelled all, all around Spain mm. and, and, and Portugal, we spent a lot of time in, a lot of time in Portugal. And you learn something about the people, how they, how they live. Uh, the important thing, of course, as far as we were concerned, when we, when we, we entered the sports when we were overseas. For instance, we played, go we played bowls mm. uh, and uh, found some, uh, things, of uh, things of interest that way, yes. Mm. But, and you've always been interested in ongoing learning and reading and, and uh, politics. Yes. I left school at 14 and finished up with a bookshop at, when I, before I was 60. So I've got that part here with learning and reading. I had a bookshop for nine years. It was a three-story place with, with books. So I had enough reading to do. And I met a lot of people too during that time who were very well educated in, in the reading and in, and in books. And that helped someone who, like me, uh, this is uh, something new, uh, but the, we, we had, we had, my wife had, the, had a business next door. Uh, she was, uh, 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 I would say, a, a, a lady of talents, uh, which was stood in good stead when we, one was, one was in employment and the other one was. But about learning and reading, well, I did my share during that period, yes. Well, it keeps you alive and, and interested in life, doesn't it? I think so. I, I've got to, people who come here and we, we talk about that. I've just given some books to, which are a bit different to a friend of mine just a, a day or two ago. I've still got a bit of a stock. And, uh, but I'm not the reader that I was, no, not mm. now. Mm. But, but I enjoy my news to, which keeps me going for a couple of hours, <laughs> at least, so, uh, during, uh, during the day. Right. So what have been some of your hobbies and interests over the years? My hobbies? Mm. I could, I, I, so the thing you can't get a picture of it. I well, very when I was 19, I bought a 30 foot boat, and we put an engine in it, and we sailed it. That was a hobby. We sailed this boat and used it for taking passengers off the beach in a place called Buckhaven, and for two or three seasons, I used it for that purpose. Uh, a 30 foot boat, but we, we we did all the work ourselves. Put an engine in and also did alterations of some parts of the board we wanted altered. And uh, it was, incidentally, it was a vessel, uh, a lifeboat that came off of a ship called the Cedric. The Cedric was the sister ship of the Titanic. Mm. And I've got an article that I put in the paper a few years ago with uh, a picture of this vessel and the story about the Titanic and the light boats. Wow. I've got one just not far away. Mm -hmm. I've got one, I've just picked it up here. Uh, this is uh, within the local press. 
uh, with my grandfather with his old fishing boat of probably nine, circa 1908 it would be uh, he lived to a great age and was actually fishing in the North Sea when he was 75 so I think the genetics were passed through from me because of all the grandchildren he had dying about 25 I'm the only one that survives wow. I must have got some of his uh, genetics really <laughs> And you used to play sport. What sports did you uh, play? My sports was my sports. My other life was rowing boats. That was a sport. Boats. Well, well, that's where I got all my sport. I couldn't play football because I had double vision in one eye. Hmm. It's not handy if you see two balls. You don't know which, which one to take. <laughs> uh, and in later life, you were playing bowls. Oh yes, I played. Uh, uh, we, Played bowls, uh, but we went back to in New, Ze New Zealand. I built another boat, and we, with my late wife, myself, we would go away for the weekend. And a doctor friend of mine, he, he had a boat too with his wife, and uh, four of us would probably go 30 or 40 miles up the coast, or some of that kind, um, which uh, was most enjoyable. Mm. So tell me about money. How important has money been to you over the years? Well, if anyone wants to sell and send me a $2,000, I'll accept it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we, 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 we felt, being in New Zealand, we had, so my wife had five sisters, and uh, I sympathize with, uh, with, with anyone who marries an only, an only daughter. Uh, I had two sons who married only daughters, and God Almighty. It's so different. When a sister has a number of sisters, they get very diplomatic in how they behave <laughs> each other and, and to other people. Uh, and I think it's uh, uh, it's an advantage to the to, to the to the lady with the who has sisters. Yes. Yeah. Can I go on? So tell me about money. Is it important to you? Uh, money. Yes, well, uh, yes, I like to think I can pay uh, where I'm now, we're in retirement uh, uh, competition, uh, which is very nice, and I have my lady friend uh, just across the park here, and to be able to pay your rent, uh, and to be able to pay your outgoings, uh, yes, the money is important, because we don't have, we don't, we're not on benefits. Mm. Was it p important to you when you were young and bringing up your children? Did Absolutely. You, did you always have enough money? Yes. Well, b b b after my young one was five or six, uh, my wife was, uh, had the opportunity of doing something where she could earn. So really, the, we had two earners most of my married life, with the exception of the first ten years. Great. So your working life two earners in the family, you, you had a reasonable income. What was the most exciting parts of your career? The most what? Exciting parts of, of your career, well, the your job. exciting, I think, when we went away for World Cruise, which we, we, we well, late wife and me, we did that twice. We did a World Cruise, the North and South Route, where uh, we were we at Pekin, and then we went round Australia and round the world, uh, actually India and Africa and right round that way, and uh, through the Suez. Um, the long trips and the, the, the costs were tolerable and bearable in those days, but uh, it would be quite different today. So what you're saying is you enjoyed having the money to spend it on things that you liked, like going on those cruises. Very much so. Mm, absolutely. We, 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 were quite, quite, we were quite willing to spend all the finance that we hired free apart from what's on the house yeah. and spend that for, 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 for doing something of that kind, yes. Mm. So what have been your biggest or most difficult lessons in life? Well, the most difficult period was when my wife died. Uh, that was very difficult. We'd been married for 51 years and I had to find a new way from there. Mm. And uh, we were living in the south of England when this happened. And after a year, I decided to come back up to my roots in Scotland. And I, 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 to looking back, and it was the best thing I could do. And that's when I met, uh, after a couple of years, I met this lady who's a friend of mine now, and, uh, and enabled, us to, enabled us both to have a companion so we could travel. But when we first started off, 
with an older person who was not who is not a hundred and five years old. Mm. Uh, but um, if it's just the head, there's nothing left. But the head's important because she's quite sensible. <laughs> so. You've had some sad times, lots of them, because we all do. How how do you think you got over those really difficult times or those sad times? Uh, I think uh, in my case, I I had family at that time to fall back on, and uh, my son, my, particularly my eldest son, uh, was very very understanding, and we didn't talk about it, but we had a very good understanding. Unfortunately, this is another sad thing that happened. Five years after his mother died, he died with cancer too. Mm. And he'd been, um, strange enough, both my sons had been married to a only girl daughter. <laughs> what I've seen of that, I don't envy anyone who's got to do with it, an only daughter. <laughs> I'll just laugh. Oh, we won't say any more. Um, so what are your tips for us young ones, so what do you think we should be doing well, to have I, a good I, I life? A walking, I, I would walk for miles uh, over the, some of the hills up here, and uh, always doing something physical. I think that's important, mm -hmm. and I do think as one gets older, cut your food down by half, mm -hmm. and make sure you're eating the right stuff. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. And what else? What else? Uh, the exercise. Uh, I say. Keep yourself fit by exercising, yes, mm -hmm. as much as possible, as much as you're able to do. What about your mind? What about keeping your mind active? Uh, well, uh, I enjoyed, uh, I've, I've always enjoyed, uh, for instance, I, uh, I was chairman of a debating society at one stage, so I, I, while I didn't have the education that some of those people had, I managed to keep them, keep them in check, but they were chairman anyway. Uh, and uh, another organisation... Since I came here, I was the president of the Oxford Scottish Society, and uh, I could do uh, some of the, uh, Robert Burns's uh, the, the note to Haggis and all this sort of stuff. And my friend uh, was a doctor. We were kept in close touch, and he was a very good orator and a very good public speaker. So he used to do the the, the, the members of the of the, of the poet. Yes. Mm, brilliant. So what are your fondest memories as you look back at the life you've had so far? What do you remember um, in, the, in the nicest or kindest of ways? What do, I, what do I remember? Yeah, what are your best memories? Uh, well, in Scotland, uh, people had to work so hard. It uh, was uh, quite different to the age we're in today. Uh, I very and yet I very fond members because we had we had a boat and we had uh, that uh, as a child as a youngster and we can get down to the sea and that, they, those were good members uh, and getting to the sea and swimming in the summertime those were very good members of my childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think social company is important. Even today, uh, I enjoy having company. Mm. And I think that's important where you'd exchange views whether you believe them or not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you don't change, do you, George? <laughs> you like to challenge people, don't you? Yeah. Get people talking. Yes, uh, I, I quite, quite enjoy having a chat. And, um, I, and I may have opinions that other people different with, but. Uh, um, I hope enjoy, I enjoy listening to the politicians. <laughs> Talking a load of rubbish, you mean? <laughs> Very much so. But again, I don't think they can do. I don't think they can govern this country in any other way. <laughs> they, they've got to talk rubbish. And due to what I find, the aristocrats of this country they keep very quiet. They think that 460 people own Scotland, and they're told they can't get they can't get their money to to buy a plot to build a house. Surely, if the government's got any sense of pass laws and regulations whereby we get that land we need, because how did they, they store it in the first place? Well, I don't think we'll go down that route anymore. Cause <laughs> <laughs> George, it's just been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me on your birthday. 
And I know my listeners uh, will really enjoy hearing what you as, as a gentleman who's 101 years old has to say about life because I'm sure not many of us know people who are as um, aged as you, shall we say. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me. It's my, our pleasure. Uh, uh, are you signed?